Hi, and welcome to The Curling Show, the podcast that brings you interviews with the sport's top athletes and the people who shape the game. Brought to you by Printworks. For screen printing of t-shirts, sweatshirts, and promotional items, they can deliver quality at great prices. Find them on the web at printworksllc.com. I'm Dean Gemmel, and before we get started, I just want to compliment everyone in the game who's generated buzz for the sport through the Olympics. It's been unbelievable this year. Now on to the show. In this edition, we talked with Richard Hart, third on Team Glenn Howard, just a couple of days after he finally won his first trip to the Briar. Well, thanks for being on the show, Rich. I know your team has had quite a schedule for the last couple of weeks, so I really appreciate your time. I want to start, you know, it was a bit ugly, but you finally got that Ontario title. After you gave that five-up lead back in the final, did you start to wonder if the Briar was something that just wasn't meant to be for you? Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah, by the sixth end, definitely had that feeling that uh, wasn't really meant to be. Actually, Glenn made a great shot in the sixth if he... Uh, I was to rub a guard there. It looked like we might have quit early. We would have got beaten maybe eight ends. It could have been a steal of four. So uh, he made a big shot there to keep the game rolling, and then things turned again for us and uh, ended up winning it easily in the end. So, You know, you've got quite a resume. with the, You know, you've been in the Olympics with Mike Harris. You've been in 10 provincial finals. You won a ton of money. Um, or provincial championships. This was your third provincial final in a row in Ontario. But how grating was it to you that you hadn't played in a briar yet? Yeah, you know what? I, I think uh, definitely. I don't know whether how many more years I have in me. I don't know how many how many more times I could keep going back there and, and fighting so hard after so many close calls. I mean, been to ten provincial, and out of those ten, I was in five finals and a couple of semifinals, and uh, and and I just uh, yeah, it, it was becoming draining, and uh, it's definitely a relief to to finally you know get the the breakthrough game and and. Uh, hopefully we'll make the best of it. Hey, you guys really played quite a schedule since the start of January. You went out to Winnipeg for the BDO Canadian Open. Yeah. Uh, that meant you had to go through the challenge round to qualify for your provincial championship. Yeah. You also went out to Kamloops to play the Canada Cup, lost in the final, and got on a plane to get back to Ontario for the start of your provincial championships. When did you guys plan this madness? Well, that's a good question, Dean. I mean, we really, you know, looked at it. We didn't look at it too much before the trials because the trials were really our focus. And then we... Uh, you know, had a disappointing finish there, five and four. I mean, we were one game out of the playoff, and and obviously sort of put a lot into that. And um, we looked at the schedule and said, you know what, we're not up for the the playdowns, and and we we skipped over the Ontario playdowns, and and said, you know what, let's let's not worry about that. Let's, we, you know, we really want to go to Winnipeg. It's one of the best fields in in the country right now, and we really don't want to miss that. So we said, let's go there and and uh, and the Canada Cup, and we'll see what happens with the rest. And um, and sure enough, you know, we we end up going to the challenge round here in Ontario and and make it through there, where it's a 16 team, one team gets through kind of deal. And um, uh, you know, we we get through there and go on to the Canada Cup and have a good run there. Sort of lose on Last Rock to to Martin and and uh, and as you said, yeah, we're on a plane, and the next day we're curling in Guelph and just kept riding the, the high really we played quite well out in Kamloops there near the end and uh, and and I think it carried through our week this past week when did it start to turn around for you guys in the challenge round or out at the Canada Cup you know in Winnipeg you guys look flat was that just post trials hangover or there was a rumor that Glenn had a snowmobile injury or well there was that too Glenn wasn't feeling great he did have a bit of a fractured rib and and it was definitely probably a factor you know I don't think he was 100% but, you know, probably moreover, uh, the, there was a trials hangover for sure, I think. We were, you know, as I said earlier, we, you know, put a lot into it, and, and it's disappointing, and it's not something you just sort of slough off, you know. And um, we, you know, we had a few tough games at the trials that, uh, you know, really end up costing us our, our playoff hopes, and, and, you know, that was disappointing, and, and maybe it, maybe that's all it took, you know, it was a bad showing out in Winnipeg and, and sort of said, hey guys, there's no point in doing this if we're not going to get our head in it. And, uh, and we somehow seem to have turned it around and uh, we're playing great again. You know, I think people don't realize how close you guys really were in the trials because you had at least one rock pick in an extra end and you had some other bad luck, I think, too, right? We lost, uh, well, we, we sort of pissed away one game against uh, Sean Adams. Is that a technical term? Yeah, it is. <laughs> That's what our coach called it anyway. He... Uh, <laughs> up to coming home uh, without and give up a, a bad deuce and 10 and he makes like a little board weight double or triple to tie the game and then a picked rock in the extra end and you know that would have been our sixth win and we lost to stout and he, he kind of beat us pretty good but there was a couple of we had a 
horrible hog line violation early in that game, which you know was about a four or five point swing, and and that turned that thing around pretty quickly. And Daisy, we lost to on Last Rock, and Gushu on Last Rock, and it, uh, yeah, you know, we were we were one good break away from being uh, in, in second or third place for sure. Hey, three original slammers in the Briar this year. Your team, Jeff Stoughton and Kevin Martin. I know Kevin takes some satisfaction from that. Do you? Um, no, not really. I mean, uh, no, I don't look at it that way. I mean, uh, the, the Grand Slams are an amazing thing that, you know, I'm proud of, to, to have been a part of the, the history of it, and, and hopefully it'll be a long history. I mean, this, uh, they're, they're four amazing events, and they're there now for everyone to qualify for, and, and um, it's not really a them and us thing for, for me anyway. I mean, uh, it was something that was asked of, of our teams to be a part of, and, and they thought that they needed to promote those events they needed exclusivity and we said hey sure you've got hundred thousand dollar purse four times a year for us be happy to come and play and uh you know the, those uh, two three years that, that glenn and i started and, and our team then was colin and jason mitchell and then uh, and then now with brent and craig you know we you know glenn learned how to skip at those things we were playing against the best teams in the world there and and without the grand slams you know you know glenn wouldn't be the skippy as today and and likewise for me a third they were a great, uh, great way for the two of us to, to really pick up our game and, and take it to, uh, you know, the level it's at now. So, no, it's not, it's not like that at all. I don't see it that way. Yeah, I know it's not an us versus them thing anymore, and that's really not the way it should be. But I think the teams that did, you know, did go for the slam participation took some heat that was probably unfair in hindsight. So, you know, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think you guys should, should uh, I think you should feel good about having a group of you back at the Briar. But. Well, I'm glad to hear, you, you know, you say that it, it was unfair. Absolutely. You know, we... Uh, you know, we gained from it. We got to play for big purses, and and you know, we obviously. I mean, the the Briar is a is an amazing event, and I'm looking forward to you know going to my first one and and seeing what it's all about. Um, but you know, in the slams, they're going to be a great thing too. Hopefully, for years to come, as I say, because uh, they they seem to be growing, and and they're a lot of fun to play in. And I I hope that uh, many Canadian curlers get a chance too, because uh, I'll tell you, we we sure do love them. That's for sure. Hey, have you watched any of the Olympic curling so far? Uh, I've seen a little bit of it. The ice looks real straight, Dean, and uh, that's got to be a disadvantage to both Canadian teams. Uh, I don't know if that's by design or what, but um, I don't know how that can happen. You know, I know Tio Franz, who actually did the ice in 98 as well for us when we were there. It, it was, I guess, fairly straight, but I don't remember it being that straight. Uh, I think that both Gushu and Clybring are going to be in tough with the ice like that. Yeah, to me, it looks like arena ice from the late 80s. Yeah, is, uh, what's that guy's name, Don Lewis? Uh, is he making the ice there? That's what it seems like, yeah. It's just uh, straight and fast and uh, and, and enjoy it. <laughs> I, when I watch it, I can't help but think it's some international curling association conspiracy against Canada because, I, you know, you, you, you can't make ice like that by accident, you know. It, it, <laughs> with what they know about ice making and rocks now, it just... It, it blows my mind that the that they're going to have to go out and play on that stuff. So. Yeah, the WCF wants to help the European teams to start everything, right? Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe that's just me, but uh, it is curious. It's in- doesn't that make you wonder when you when you see ice like that at such a huge event? Uh, I mean, uh, I, I feel you know maybe the guy maybe they like it like that. I don't know. Maybe Gushu's team is, is, is will thrive on it, but uh, I know that would definitely hurt our team, and and uh, I would feel like that would be a huge disadvantage. Hey, last question. Your team seems to bring a little more fashion edge into your game, and, and maybe it's those young guys at front end, but how do you guys feel about wearing the CCA-approved uniforms at the Briar, and are you getting fitted for those OCA banquet jackets? <laughs> we are getting fitted for the OCA banquet jackets, and uh, it definitely is the young guys who, who try to bring a little fashion to the, uh, to the team. You know, those white belts that they've uh, made so famous, actually... Uh, Craig bought me one for Christmas, so it was a gift, so I feel obligated to uh, to wear it sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, man, it, they're a lot of fun, those two guys to play with, and uh, as you've probably seen, fantastic players as well. All right, we're going to end with the run-back segment. That's where I give you a topic, and you give me your thoughts in one to three words. In one to three words, okay. Yeah, and, I, you know, I ballpark it. If you're a little more, a little less, well, you can't be less than one word. But the Olympic stuff from Roots that you got in 98 compared to this year's stuff from the Bay. Oh, the, <laughs> times a hundred better exactly when torontonians will stop thinking they're too cool to be curling fans 
2030, I believe. Yeah, it's a tough sell, isn't it? I mean, Guelph had it looked like they put on a good event and they couldn't draw that well. Well, that's a whole other story. I think they really got killed with the Rogers Television. You know, mm. it's, maybe it's too much to ask here in Ontario to have you know daily coverage of every single draw and then expect people to drive for two, three hours to watch. So, all right, the best Ontario team people in the rest of the world don't know about. Oh, good question. Uh, how about um, Phil Daniels? What you feel when you watch the curling from the Olympics? Uh, great memories. Hey, thanks for your time, Rich. I enjoyed talking with you, and uh, good luck in Regina. Oh, thank you very much, Dean, and best of luck with your show. That's Richard Hart on The Curling Show, brought to you by Printworks, guys who really know how to create killer screen-printed T-shirts. They're on the web at printworksllc.com. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the medal with a sense of humor from Toronto's own Black Pudding. Salt flat screaming, chin beaming, no two grains of sand are alive. So seed, reap the speed, angels wing on a Chinese